Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, today I'm doing the New York Islanders season preview. If you're a subscriber, thanks for watching. If you're not, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. I know I got some of the bigger te name teams in the league coming up here soon. I know the Islanders don't get love, but come on, they won five straight back there in the late 70s, early 90s. Early 80s, wow, early 90s, wow. Oh, well, they did have that one run until Dale Hunter ended it by injuring Pierre Turgeon at the end of uh, when they got eliminated in overtime. If you haven't seen that video, look up Dale Hunter, Pierre Turgeon. You will see what I am talking about. Dirtbag. I don't think even, even, even Capital fans can say that nowadays that, yeah, he's a dirtbag for that one. Come on. Anybody who said, doesn't say that, you're lying to yourself. Even Dale Hunter said he was a dirtbag for that one. But he's developing some dang good players in the juniors, so can't complain about that. Alright, so, New York Islanders season preview. You know what's funny? It took me years to realize that was actually Stan Island right there in the middle, I think. I had no—I just thought it was the orange patch. I didn't realize it was the actual island itself. <laughs> Which is sad. It really is sad, but that, I did not notice that. Alright. We have the additions. They didn't add much of anything because they are a salary cap uh, strap team right now. And they still have Matthew Barzell to re-sign. I mean, as of when I made this video, he has not re-signed. If and when he does, I will put it in the comments. Or not in the comments. In the description of the video, I will put the edit saying that. So, additions. They got, oh, I'm sorry, oh, excuse me. Austin Zarnick, two years, seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. AJ Greer, they got via trade, and Dimitro Timoshov, they got via trade, and he is still unsigned as a RFA. All right, subtractions: they lost Christopher Gibson to Tampa, they lost Tomas Grice to Detroit, Derek Brassard just signed with Arizona a couple days ago, Kyle Burrows to Colorado in a trade. Uh. I had this fun with the Colorado video, too. Uh, you can go with Devin or you can go with Devon. I'm going with Devon because, you know what? If you liked wrestling back during the Dudley Boys tag team days, all I can think of when I see his name is Devon Get the Table. If you don't get that reference, look it up. It is hilarious. All right. Devon Taves to Colorado, which, honestly, that is probably the most painful loss out of this whole list. Grace... He's, he's been a soldier for him for the last few years, and it sucks to see him leave, but to be honest, they have goaltenders there who should be better, especially their one coming up, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. The unfortunate one, Johnny Boychuk retired because of an eye injury. That, that really is unfortunate. I mean, I always liked watching Johnny Boychuk play, and I know he's been injured a lot the last few years and has not provided what he did when he was with Boston. But he was still a good, solid defender and provided a lot, especially with the physicality. All right. And then you got Jordan Schmaltz, who is a free agent, and Tom Kunako, who I have not heard if he signed anywhere, but from what I could tell, he's still a free agent. They did re-sign Ryan Pollock to a two-year, $5 million per season deal, which is a good keep. Uh, Joshua Hosang, one year, $700,000. AJ Greer, one year, $700,000. Uh, the funny thing, they re-signed Josh Hosang. He's not on their, their, um, what's that called? Their, why am I drawing a blank on it? Wow. Hold on, give me one second. I can think of it if I see it. It's coming up, I promise. Training camp. God, why can't I think of training camp there? Yeah, he's, he's not on their training camp roster, and they've already said that he will not be playing on the team this year. It's like, why would you re-sign the guy if you're not going to even give him a shot to play? Uh, I know he's caused a lot of heart headache for them, so I don't think many Islanders fans are too sad about them burying him anyways. So, just my two cents there. Parker Wertherspoon, two years, $725,000 per. Sebastian Ajo, this is not the one, the forward, this is the defender Sebastian Ajo. Two different people, not related. 
which I thought was pretty funny. They aren't related at all, yet they have the same name. Carolina has the forward who can score a lot. This guy is a defensive prospect who they are hoping will make the team probably next year or two. Two years, $725,000 per. And then here's the goalie they are not sad about Grice leaving over. Ilya Sorokin. He is supposedly one of the better goaltending prospects out there. So we'll see how he works out. But he signed a one-year, $2 million contract. So that's hopefully he provides them with what they want. All right, cap right now is sitting at seventy-seven and a half million, which gives them three point nine million dollars in space to re-sign Matthew Barzell. Hmm. If you're not the only one not seeing that happen for that low of a price, you're not alone. I don't think Barzell's seeing it either. Why do you think he hasn't re-signed yet? Like that's a contract right there they'd love to get rid of for him is Andrew Ladd. Five and a half million, and he's healthy again. If he was on long-term injury, they probably would be like, woohoo, we got this. Instead, it's, damn, why is this happening to us? I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be mean to Andrew Ladd. He, he's been a great player over the years, but he's not that player anymore. With all the injuries he's had over the last few years, I think they were kind of hoping when they signed him that he'd be on long-term injury for. Some of it, at least, towards the end. Like I said, I don't hope anyone gets hurt, but I'm just saying if you were an Isles fan or the Islanders' ownership, you're probably saying, damn, why didn't he just stay hurt? Or not stay hurt, but why didn't he just say I'm hurt to get his money and just quietly go into the sunset? But Because especially since he's already won a cup in his career, at least one or two. So it's like, eh, I'm sure they would have just wanted to go quietly into the sunset and just enjoyed his semi-quote-unquote retirement for three years. All right, so outside of that, moving on from that tangent, you got Casey Sezikis is a UFA after this year, probably definitely a guy they want to keep. He's been a solid third, fourth line guy for him. I mean, he's definitely a physical guy and does well with Clutterbuck and Martin, which... I don't know why I didn't put Martin on the re-sign list. He did re-sign the air day. And then you got Anthony Bolivier. who used kind of want more money. RFA out there this year. Michael Del Cole, who actually did play last year for them finally. Didn't look too bad, but not the as high a prospect as he was picked to be. But he's an RFA out there this year. And like I said, Matthew Barzell. And then you also had Dimitro Timoshov are RFAs. So, <laughs> yeah, you got some serious cap problems coming up here. Adam Pelich is a RFA out there this year. So their defense is set for another year. And then after that, oh, you got three RFAs, or three UFAs and an RFA the season after this. And if Noah Dobson plays this year and looks really dang good for the next couple years, that's not going to be cheap. I can see them letting Letty go at that point. I can pretty much guarantee they probably will. If not trade them before. Because, I mean, they have more, from what I've seen, they have more defensive prospects. Which, I don't know why that giant boy chuck and injury reserve, he retired. Oh, he's 36, that's why. His cap still stays on, which hurts. Uh, goalies, they have uh, Simeon Varlamov, who they signed and did not play up to what he had done before. It Last year was not a goalie year. For the most part. I mean, some of those young guys came up, like Mackenzie Blackwood in New Jersey. Looked amazingly good, even though they were on a bad team. He was on a bad team. Varlamov was on a good team. He could have had a better year. I think they expected more. Because, if I remember correctly, it was Tomas Grice who was playing as goalie come playoff time. I don't think they saw that. I don't think Grice saw that. I sure as heck don't think Varlamov saw that coming. They have Ilya Sorokin, who is going to be coming up. Supposedly one of the top guys. He's an RFA out there this year. We'll see how his year goes, because that'll determine how much he makes next year, too. And then they're still paying Rick DiPietro for his buyout. Even though it says $0, that doesn't, that's just $0 on the cap, not what they're actually paying him. All right. 
So you got Simone or Simon or Simone Holmstrom. He, if I, if that is the Holmstrom I'm thinking of, he has been playing for Team Sweden, who is now done with their World Junior Championships, so maybe he makes the team. Maybe. You got Oliver Wallstrom, too. Kiefer Bellows, solid forward prospects there. Hosing, I'm, I guarantee they expected a lot more out of than what they got, and a lot more headache is what they got than anything else. All right, non-roster defenders. Let's see. No one's a free agent or RFA after this year. I forgot to say it for forwards. I'm sorry. Uh, Kiefer Bellows is RFA. Bobo Carpenter. <laughs> That's funny. I like that name, Bobo. Uh, Mason Jobs or Jobs is a UFA. Otto Koivula is a RFA. Uh, Austin Sarnik, Joshua Hosang. Oh no, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. Joshua Hosang and AJ Greer are the RFAs. Austin Sarnik has another year at this year. Tanner Fritz and Cole Bardreau, or Bardreau is a UFA. Or both are UFAs. Yeah, their their non roster defenders are set for next few years, or next couple of years at least. I mean, they have Sebastian Ajo, who I'm sure they're hoping will make it this year. They only have one non roster goalie though, which is kind of surprising. Most teams have more than that, at least three. All right, their 2020 draft. They did not have a pick till number 90, which nowadays is, I believe, a third round pick because it's 31, so 31, 62, 93. Yeah, so that would have been a third round pick. Alexander, I'm going to say this incorrectly, Lundquist or Junkrantz. Junk I'm sorry, Lundquist is what it was. I don't know why I said Lundquist. Wow. All right, yeah, but he is a left winger. Uh, 121, Alex Jeffries, a left winger. 152, William Dufour, a right winger. Number 183, Matthias Raja Niemi, a defender. And number 214, Henrik Tikkanen, or Tikkanen, a goalie. Which, why wasn't he listed as a non-roster goalie? Uh, was he? No, that was not him. Why is he not listed? That's weird. That was the first. All right, so the draft picks, they got their own in the first round, and then the third through the seventh, and then round two, they don't have theirs, but they have Colorado's. 2022, they have all their own draft picks and Colorado second again, and then all their own in 2023. So they have two seconds next year and Colorado second this year, which will probably be on the higher end of round two. All right, here's their lineup. They have a solid lineup. They really do. I mean, they could use some scoring depth, that's for sure. I mean, they don't have the scoring ability of a lot of the other top teams that are cash-strapped. Or cap-strapped, I'm sorry. But, I mean, like I said, they still got to get Barzell re-signed, and he is not, probably not going to be at the current state. They'll have to get rid of somebody. Well, their first line, Anders Lee, Matthew Barzell, Jordan Everly should be a solid line. I mean, they provide quite a bit. I mean, Barzell definitely didn't score as much as he did when Tavares was there, but he definitely still has some playmaking ability, that's for sure. He's not a slouch when scoring comes around, either. Second line, Anthony Beauvillier, Brock Nelson, and Josh, Josh Bailey. Solid, definitely a solid second line. They can provide offense. Third one, third line, they got Michael Del Cole, who I'm hope they're hoping. Ten points in fifty three games. Not great, but he was playing a lot of sheltered minutes last year in those games. Cause as you see, as you can see, eleven minutes forty seven seconds. Not a lot of time on ice. Considering he's drafted fifth overall. Fifth in twenty fourteen, they want more. <laughs> There's no way you don't want more than that from that kid. I mean, he is 24. This may be his last chance to prove that he can be something other than a depth forward. So, hopefully he does it, because I'm sure they would not cry on the aisle. Alright, then you got John Gabriel Pajot. $5 million for the foreseeable future. A solid goal scorer. And him and Brock Nelson both had 26 goals. I mean, if Barzell remains unsigned when the season begins, Pajot will be that first-line center, I have a feeling. And then also Leo Komarov on that line, who is not providing the offense he did before. And he wasn't a huge scorer before, but he did more than 14 points at least. 
Uh, fourth line, Ross Johnston, Casey Zizekas, and Cal Cutterbuck. Ugh. Cutter, Clutterbuck. Wow, I can't speak today. I mean, that's a line that is going to hit everything moving, so expect to be hit with those guys. You know they're going to be a solid fourth line. All right, defensively, Adam Pelich and Ryan Pollock on the first line. Then you got Nick Letty and Scott Mayfield. Then you got Thomas or Thomas Hickey and Noah Dobson, according to this. Which, Thomas Hickey didn't play last year? Was he hurt? Why didn't he play? That's confusing. I don't remember seeing him hurt last year, but maybe he was. All right, then they're saying goalies are going to be Varlamov and Sorokin. I mean, Varlamov, he had a winning record, 19-14, but goals against average, he could have been better. Save percentage, maybe better, but Thomas Grice just had a great year for him last year, I guess. Then injuries, Johnny Boychuk, who we know, has said that he is retiring, but because he's 36, that cap hit stays. But because he's injured, too, that means that they technically, I believe, I could be incorrect about this, but... I believe they can still put him on long-term injury reserve. I'll have to do more research on that, but I believe they still can. Scratches, Timoshov, who, like I said, is also unsigned still. I mean, he provided 9 points in 44 games last year. I believe it was with Detroit. So, I don't know how much more you're going to get from him, but he was only 24, so maybe a little bit more. Austin Zarnick will be a scratch, and Sebastian Ajo, the defender, is a scratch. But I can see him also filling in if, like, say, if Thomas Hickey was hurt last year. If he's hurt again, Nick Letty's hurt, someone like that, he could plug in. Ooh, they have Andrew Ladd on the taxi squad. Ouch. They're going to try and bury that contract, but he's 35, so I don't think they can. Like I said, he came back at the end of the year last year, which kind of hurt with the cap situation. Four games, one goal, one point. He got his first goal in a while, I believe. Uh, let's see, they also have Oliver Wallstrom on that train camp list, Kiefer Bellows. I just like saying the name Bobo Carpenter. That's just a fun name. They have Bodie Wild, a defender, and their draft pick they're looking forward to developing. So maybe he plays some games too. Josh Hosang is in the uh, minors. I, they've already said he is not going to be on the team this year again. Former first-round pick, 28th overall in 2014. Definitely want more than the headache they got. Simon Wallstrom, or Holmstrom is on loan right now, but his team is done at the World Juniors, so he might be playing for the uh, training camp. We might see. All right, then you got all these guys as their prospects. I don't see many that scream out, we're going to make the team. So I'm not sure if any of those truly will. All right, let's see. Top prospects. According to NHL.com, their top prospect is still Noah Dobson. Seven points in 34 NHL games last year. So I'm sure they'll want him to play and do more this year. Ilya Sorokin, 26, 10, and 3 in 40 KHL games last year. Oliver Wallstrom, 0 points in 9 NHL games, and 22 points in 45 AHL games. I'm sure they'd love for him to make the team and do more than that. Simon Holmstrom, 15 points in 46 AHL, AHL games. Both of them probably were spending last year getting used to the North American game compared to the European. So maybe they do better this year, maybe they both make the team. Kiefer Bellows, 3 points in 8 NHL games, and 31 points in 52 AHL games. So, I can see all 5 of these guys playing for them at some point this year, if not making the team full-time all season. So, their pro top prospects are growing, where they also have Bodie Wild, Sebastian Ajo, and Otto Koivola, or Koivola, I want to say is how you say it, are also other top prospects. So, their prospects are ready to start making that jump now. I'm not sure what they got outside of these guys is the problem, because they, like you saw, they didn't have any draft picks the third round this year. And the further you go down in the rounds, the less likely it is they make the team, and the less likely it is 
their top end prospects. But, as we've seen with other people, like Nikolai Hobby Bullen being drafted last overall, uh, what's his name, uh, Joe Pavelski being drafted in the seventh round, there can be late round guys who develop. They take more time, but they can develop. It does happen. It's just, you gotta have Detroit luck to do that, because Detroit was able to do that for a long time, and then... I don't know what happened to their draft people. Maybe they all retired. I don't know, but they just... Their drafting hadn't been as good there for a while. Or it was just because they always had high high draft picks, and those late ones just never developed like they had hoped. The previous ones had. Because Zetterberg was not an early round pick, and neither was Datsuk. Yet they were great players for them. Alright, season outlook for the New York Islanders. Probably going to be a middle-range team. Just because of the division they're in. And because they don't have Barzell re-signed right now. I mean, they usually finish mid-range with most of those teams in that division anyways. They usually finish towards the middle, like a... Like a... What are those called? A wild card team? Uh, but I still see them being there. Even without Barzell, they can probably still be there. I mean, with Barzell, they still will be there. I mean, they're in a good division. I mean, outside of the Canadian division, this is probably the hardest one to pick. I mean, Central, you can pretty much pick the top three. West, you can definitely pick the top three, and then after that, it's just a crapshoot as to who, who is better at not being good. So, that's where they sit. I mean, I, I think the Islanders will finish middle to the bottom of their division. Because they have a very fine line in what they have in the minors to come up and make a difference. So if they have major injuries, they're going to be bottom of that division. Especially if Barzell sits out. That's going to hurt. But they have to get rid of somebody too in order to maintain, in order to keep him. So they're kind of in a bad position right now because of the salary cap. So... I still see them as a middle-range team one way or the other. Even if they have to get rid of a big-name guy, like if they get rid of, let's say they get rid of Nick Letty, they have young guys who can plug in and hopefully do good, but that's what I see being the most expendable to make space. But they're going to have to sweeten the deal by giving up a draft pick, higher draft pick, in order for someone to take that contract. And there's not many teams that can right now, because a lot of the teams who can are financially suffering teams right now. So they don't want to take on those contracts. So that's where I see them being. Like I said, they're going to be a middle-range team, probably make the playoffs, and surprise people in the playoffs like usual, for like they have for the last few years. So good luck to the Islanders, a team that I've always liked personally. I've never had a problem with them. So good luck to them. Good luck to the Isles fans. I, I think it'll still be a good year. I'm just not sure if you got what it takes to win the cup, maybe, but I don't even know how the playoffs are going to work at this point, so we'll see. But as of right now, middle range team, so I think you'll be there, and I think it'll be a good, fun time seeing some of the old rivalries come back, like seeing eight games against the New York Rangers. Maybe that old hatred will come back, and Ranger fans will continue to chant, Potvin sucks. They still do, if I remember, if I remember correctly. Poor Dennis Pop, not poor Dennis Pop, and he, he earned that right. <laughs> but they still chant that, and that was from like the late 70s, early 80s, so. <laughs> Guy still gets crap when he goes to town. So, good luck, Islanders, and if you're, a, if you're a subscriber, thank you for watching. If you're not, thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to join other people in watching, and be notified when the videos drop. And I will see you all next video. Oh, make sure to like, comment, and share as well. And bye, everybody.